The new two-part pension system is here. It's actually three parts, and we have got everything you need to know. Rainbow is returning to the JSC after 17 years. OPEC Plus crashes oil. First quarter GDP. Santova buyer at 7 Rand 50. Coalition talks are ongoing. This is JC Direct, episode 590 for 6 May. My name is Simon Brown. Podcast is brought to you by JustOneLap.com. And let's get into that two-pot system. So initially proposed uh, by the, by, by, I think it was actually the unions, perhaps it was Kasatu, but Treasury picked it up, a bunch of other uh, institutions did as well, signed into law by the president last week. I think, was it Tuesday, just ahead of the election or just after the election? Anyway, it is now good to go for 1 September. There are a couple of important points. Let's first deal with what will happen with any monies that you have in a pension or a Provident a Reg 28 scheme uh, that is there before 1 September. And that money, up to 10% or 30000 maximum 30000 will be then put into a savings pot. And you can now draw this money out whenever you want. It will only be 30K if you've got more than 300,000 in total in your Reg 28, but you can draw out. No questions asked, you can take it out. You, the, the company, your, your fund administrator, will need to get a, a tax clearance from SARS for you, and it will be taxed. That is important. If you're paying 30% tax and you take out your 30K, you're actually only going to get 21,000. Remember, when you put the money into the Reg 28, you got a tax benefit when you take it out you then pay tax on it. That's critically important. After 1 September, any money that you put into this uh, pension fund account, pension, provident, retirement annuity, etc., one-third will go into a savings amount and two-thirds will go into a retirement fund. That retirement fund money you cannot touch until you turn 55 or die or actually emigrate. Those are the only ways you can access it. In the past, if you quit a job, you could cash it out. You would pay tax on it, but you certainly could. That two-thirds now sits untouchable. The other one-third you can, of course, take out whenever you want, uh, you know, subject to, to again, the, 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 the tax clearance from SARS, no problem with that. And again, it will be added to your income tax and taxed accordingly. So be very careful of that. There, there are a couple of things here. Firstly, don't take the money. That, that money really is for emergency. This is not money which is, hey, let's go to Zanzibar or, you know, I need new wheels for my car or something like that. This really is medical emergencies you've, or you've lost your job or, or, or something like that. It really is for a proper emergency because, yes, the money is there. That is nice to have. The problem being, of course, is that particularly if you still got decades until retirement, that money you take out now even if it's only 30K, will be worth a whole bunch more come retirement time when you really need it. Uh, whether it be for medical or in retirement, maybe you want to go to Zanzibar or get new wheels or whatever the case may be. It really is meant to be long-term retirement savings. There's also another issue, that savings pot. So savings to me traditionally means well, it's going to be cash or near cash. Uh, and I've asked one or two fund administrators, and there's no requirement for how it works. You can put it in whatever you want. They're going to have to have it in relatively liquid assets. But now, in equity, certainly, if you look at the large top 40 stocks and the like, even if they're the offshore component, which can be up to 45%, those are very liquid. So just check that your fund administrator isn't putting that savings pot in a cash account because that's just not going to grow anywhere. You still want it properly invested, and if you request it, you should be able to get it in a couple of days, maybe a, a week, yeah, if they're very slow, a week and a half. But it shouldn't be a problem in terms of accessing that money. So we are live. 1 September is the date. Don't take the money. Absolutely don't take the money, unless there is a proper emergency. And I know what you're saying. Ah, it'll be fine. Okay, so you take the money, you go to Zanzibar, you have a great 10 days in Zanzibar, and you get back and you fall down the stairs when you land in Oratambo at the airport, and you, I don't know, smash your teeth, and you haven't got medical aid, and now you could really do with that money. Mm -hmm. Yeah, save it for the real deal. Let's not get clever and, and, and uh, you know, use it for, for fun. This is retirement money, absolutely, first, foremost, and last most.
Last week we did uh, uh, our One Invest event with uh, Johanna Rasmus. We were talking around commodities and the ETNs and ETFs that they got. Uh, he's he's a, a, a absolute wealth of knowledge. You'll find it at justonelap.com slash ETFs. Well worth the 30-odd minutes to go and listen. Also, fun fact, everyone goes and buys the GLD ABSA uh, gold ETF, right? To 0.3. The one invest gold ETF to 0.25%. It's tiny. It's 0.05%, but I'm always going to say it. If there's money going, I'd rather it in my pocket than somebody else's. We've also got two events coming up. 20 June, a power hour. Uh, you can attend in person at the Standard Bank head office in Rosebank, Johannesburg, or webcast trading as a side hustle. And then we've got the week after that, which is 20... 20- 5 June, we're going to be doing the last of the series you've been doing with One Invest. We're going to be looking at essentially income from ETFs, and that could be focusing on bond ETFs as well as REIT, real estate investment trusts. You can find all the information for that, just one lap.com slash events. So RCL, have, uh, RCL Foods have announced they will be unbundling the rainbow operation, which is essentially the chicken business. This will happen, I think, 26, 28 June. You will get one rainbow share for every RCL share you used to hold. Interestingly, RCL left the JSC in June 2007. The question is, is this a good deal or not? And, and I'm going to, I mean, sure. I, I like the idea we're going to have two businesses that are a little more focused. Uh, the RCL should be less cyclical because chickens is a very cyclical business. They are getting rid of it at a tough time. We've just come out of avian flu. We've just come out of chronic load shedding. Those have all hurt the industry. So, yes, nice to have more listings. Do you want to be invested in chicken? And if you are, is it not perhaps better to be an astral? That maybe is the bigger question. And here's the RCL share price was up some 5% on Tuesday when the deal got announced. But the reality of the situation is that what you've got is shareholders who are going to get the rainbow and don't want the rainbow. In other words, like we always see with Zeta and all these unbundlings, what you get is an overhang and initially a lot of selling. If you want to buy, some cheeky bids are likely to get uh, filled. And if you want to sell, uh, it's hard to sell because there's going to be a lot of you trying to sell. And I suspect sellers overwhelm the buyers. So if anything, pressure is more likely to be heading down. So if you're looking to exit, keep an eye on it. Uh, Maybe not rush. Sometimes you get a slightly better deal if you wait a bit. But that wait a bit could be six months to a year. Let's be clear. It's not necessarily uh, just in, you know, it's going to happen by sort of Tuesday. So OPEC Plus had a meeting on the weekend, and they basically said that the voluntary production cuts were going to be phased out uh, over the rest of this year, focusing down towards the end of the year, and they crashed the oil price. Now, don't get me wrong. I love me a crashing oil price, right? Because I have a car, and that costs money to run because petrol, so this is really good. As I'm recording this, oil down at 77.52. We're looking at Brent here because that's the one that matters to us. West Texas Intermediate is for the American peeps out there. And support is in the low 70s. And I think it can get there. I absolutely think it can get there. And the problem is, quite simply, uh, for those folks uh, who who are saying, yay, cheap oil, such as me, is, well, do you hold Sassel? Because if you're holding Sassel, then you've got uh, a bit of a doubly headache in a sense. The Sassel is a disaster of a chart. I'll zoom that out even more. You can see that there was some support, some support around the 130. That has gone. This is catching falling knives. Everybody says Sassel is a good deal. It's a great investment. It's a ridiculously low PE and high dividend yield. The last two are true, but of course that dividend could evaporate or reduce. The PE could crash higher by just earnings coming under pressure. Right now it's quite simple. I wouldn't be touching Sassel until we see a technical turn on the chart. And I know Standard Bank have got a call out there for 550 Rand target price which is uh, deeply brave. What is by average price target is 222. The low price target is 165, and Sassel is sub 120. Interestingly, no sells, no strong sells, yet the answer on Sassel has, you should have sold it. 
last year at 220 odd was undoubtedly the trade. Uh, two strong buys, three buys, and two holds. The market is saying they like it. But whilst the market is saying they like it, they're speaking with forked tongue because the price is going down. That is just the honest answer. Price is going down. Uh, there is little good here at this point in time. Uh, Sassel, best left alone is my view. Certainly for now. I, 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 I want no, 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 no thanks with, with Sassel at all. Don't need it. Don't like it in particular. Uh, we've got a buyer on Santova. And I want to look at this because it's always interesting just to see them. And let's, let's talk through it. Uh, let's call it up and get to a screen. And we want that screen and that screen and that screen. So this is a daily chart, which is important. And what you can see is quite clearly a buyer there at 750 dating back to 3 May. Yep, 3 May. Someone's been stepping in. They obviously weren't there on two particular days, but broadly they come in and they like to be buying at around 750. There has also been a seller at 760. So a bit of a fight off at the moment. Uh, at this point in time, the 760 seller is not in market, but the 750 buyer is there. The volume isn't massive, only 48,000 and some change, but it's probably an iceberg. How an iceberg works is you say, I want to buy Centover, 7 Rand 50 million shares, but never show more than 20,000 at a time. So you trade the 20,000 and then you come back with another 20 and another 20 until eventually you've got your full million. The key thing with this is it tells us a couple of things. Obviously, it tells us there's a buyer there at 750. Nice. But what it doesn't tell us is if that buyer is going to be around for any particular period of time. And that's always the trick. Now, if that buyer steps away, does the share price suddenly start to fall further? Have they been propping it up? Has the seller at 760, who seems to disappear from time to time, been keeping a, 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 a lid on it? But if you're looking to buy a stock, it is often worth your time to say, you know what, there's a buyer there at 750, maybe we can get a little deal. Let's see if that buyer starts to fade out and then you could go in at cheaper prices. So that's what I'm always looking for in those type of scenarios. You're only going to see it with small stocks. You're not going to see it with the big caps. I mean, you will, but they'll be very fleeting uh, and usually much better disguised than that in a sense. We had first quarter GDP coming out minus 0.1%, not a nice number. Although election jitters, consumer under pressure, I mean, everything except agriculture was poor. Second quarter should be better. We've pretty much had no load shedding so far in this quarter, which, of course, would have been April, May, nothing. And so far, what, five days into June, I'm recording this on Wednesday afternoon, still no load shedding. That is certainly helping. But there's still all the jitters around the election, both in the lead up to the election and the election in of itself. And right now, we're still at that point of coalition talk. So now we have the final numbers. And the final numbers say, quite simply, uh, no one got a majority nationally. No one got a majority in KZN and uh, Mpumalanga, although in Pumalanga it's like, I think, was it Northwest, Northern Cape, one vote needed, and then Gauteng. So really it's KZN, it's Gauteng, and it is nationally that we're going to have to have some sort of deal. The ANC issued a statement on Wednesday to say that they're favoring a government of national unity, that the door was open to the MK, but in controversies where hadn't responded. Uh, Jacob Zuma has made it quite clear he wants Ramaphosa to stand down. But they have spoken to other parties, the IFP, the NFP, the Patriotic Alliance, the Democratic Alliance, and the EFF. Government of national unity would basically be pulling everybody in. Yeah, you know, Getting to that point where you've probably got plus 70, maybe even close to 80% sort of support. In terms of you know, uh, uh, the positions, in terms of the executive cabinet positions and all of that, I'm not sure. But there's also a case of six or seven cabinet ministers who hasn't made it on the list for the, for the ANC. You've got two days after the announcement of the election to uh, rejig your list. I don't know if that has happened. But at this point, a number of cabinet ministers, including Police Minister Becca Kele, is out. Of course, uh, uh, Abraham Patel is, is not coming back. He's told us that, as uh, Gordon as well has also said, Ruben Gordon has said he's not coming back. Exactly how this will work, I'm not sure. It needs to be concluded by the 16th. So we have got 10 days. 17th, of course, then a public holiday, and then Parliament will sit, elect a speaker and the like. 
There was also talk around a minority government where, for example, the DA would control parliament, get the speaker and chairs on the various committees, and ANC would have the executive. I can see why the DA would like that. I can see why the ANC wouldn't like that. But at the moment, the ANC is speaking to absolutely everybody, and what we effectively then have is a RAND that is bouncing everywhere. And when I say everywhere, I mean proper. The RAND is is moving like crazy at the moment. Uh, And, uh, of course, you can't show me that chart. Show me that chart instead. Um, No surprise that the RAND just doesn't know which way to go, because we don't know which way to go. Uh, Why did I do my RAND the wrong way around? Uh, It should be USD czar. There we go. Uh, The RAND doesn't know which way to turn. It is just simply confused. It is saying it was out at 690 at one point today. Uh, Now it's at, uh, sorry, 1890. Now it's 1888. So pretty much back there. The RAND is going to tell us what the world is thinking. And if you look at Mexico, Mexican peso lost some 6%. If we look at what's happened in India, uh, they didn't like those elections either. The market is speaking. Now, we can debate until we blow in the face whether this is fair, right, or whatever. The point is the market is speaking, and there's not a heck of a lot as individuals we can particularly do about it. Uh, we have Kuba Naidu joining Investec. He was the Saab governor or deputy governor. He quit end of last year. This is six months uh, garden leave. I don't like this. We had Rene van Veek joined uh, Investec, uh, sorry, ABSA. This was around 2017, also from Saab. I don't like it. I, I think, you know what it is? It, it reminds me of the... The, the politicians in, in, in America who bail from politics and go and join a big telco just after having done some nice laws and stuff or from the, the – the, 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 it, 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 it's not illegal. Let me stress that. I just think that if you've been a banking regulator, if you've been any sort of regulator, you shouldn't be able to go into industry for, I don't know, five years not just six months. As I say, it's legal. Uh, Don't get me wrong. Absolutely nothing illegal. Just uh, sits uncomfortable with me. So what's up coming uh, tomorrow, Thursday? We've got Copper 360 results. They're going to be quite ugly. They've got some processing problems at their plant, so they're still losing money. They need to fix that. We've also got the ECB Thursday afternoon expected as a quarter percent rate cut. Friday, the Fashini Group uh, results coming. We've also got Chinese import-export data, which I'm keen to see, and then, of course, U.S. jobs, which uh, Jerome Powell is very keen to see. Next week, Monday, Tuesday, fairly quiet. Wednesday is SPA results. I'm keen to see that. I'm hoping they're a bit better, that they've solved the SAP problem in KZN. We've also then got U.S. inflation and the FOMC rate announcement. There is no change expected from the FOMC. That should be pretty much as it has been, i.e., as I say, uh, no change. You're just going to keep it as it is, unless, unless the jobs data is really, really, really ugly. But I can't see that happening at all. JC is a registered trademark of the JC Limited. JC Direct is an independent broadcast and is not endorsed or affiliated with, nor has it been authorized or otherwise approved by JC Limited. The views expressed in this program are solely those of the presenter and do not necessarily reflect the views of JC Limited. So I suspect that my screen hasn't been showing properly, I, I, and I don't know, I'm recording on the fly. But I, it's not looking like it should be looking. And importantly, I, I, yeah, anyway, apologies if you've been on the YouTube and that has been the issue. If you're always looking, audio, listening on the audio, don't worry. We always do the audio. But, of course, we do also now some, uh, do the YouTube as well. Just go search for JC Direct on YouTube. You will find it there. We'll park it there this week. Remember events, 20 June and 25 June. One is income from REITs and bonds. The other is uh, trading as a side hustle. Just one lap.com slash events. My name the Simon, we'll chat again next week. Look after yourself, and if you can, look after somebody else as well. Cheers, all.